Well, last night, the Australian people voted. Uh, and that's the wonderful thing about democracy. The Australian people get to make a choice. And last night, they chose Mr Albanese to be the next Prime Minister of Australia. Whilst it wasn't the result that obviously the coalition had been looking for, we respect the decision of the Australian people. And I recall the words of Prime Minister Scott Morrison last night when he addressed the Australian people and he said, we believe in Australia and we believe in Australians and we respect the decision of the Australian people. In relation to Western Australia, I look at what happened to the Western Australian Liberal Party last year at the state election. We were reduced to but two seats in the Legislative Assembly. Our primary vote was around 21%. There was a lot of rebuilding that we needed to do. Whilst we had a huge swing here in Western Australia and we have lost at least four seats, we have at least commenced the rebuilding process. And when I look at where our primary vote landed last night, and there are still a lot of counting to go in relation to postal votes, we've at least got it to around 35%. So the rebuilding process has well and truly started for the Western Australian Liberal Party. When I look at the Australia that we hand over to the incoming Labor government, I am incredibly proud of what we have achieved, in particular given the last two years. In March 2020, none of us thought that we would wake up to a global pandemic. None of us thought that the government would have to make the decision to close the borders to China. None of us thought that the government would have to make the decision to close down parts of the economy. But that was our reality. And the Prime Minister said at the time that he would make the decisions that would protect both the lives and livelihoods of Australians. And that meant we had to make some very tough decisions, but we made those tough decisions. And when I look at where we are today, we are one of the few countries in the world that maintains its AAA credit rating. We have more people in employment than ever before. We were the first country to have more people in employment than we did before COVID-19 hit. We have the unemployment rate now at a 48-year low, 3.9%. And when I look at the decisions that we made as a government to protect the jobs of Australians throughout COVID-19, and of course that was with the JobKeeper payment, we ensured that around 800,000 Australians maintain that connection to their employment. And of course, we made decisions to protect the lives of Australians. And the decisions that we made, they did save tens of thousands of lives. So in terms of the Australia that we hand over to Mr Albanese and the incoming Labor government, I am very, very proud of the decisions that we made we hand over an Australia that is in good shape, that is the envy of so many other parts of the world. But ultimately, last night, democracy was in action and the choice of the Australian people was made and it was a choice that has elected an incoming Albanese Labor government. Do you regret supporting Clive Palmer's challenge against the WA hard border? In terms of Western Australia, I think that the federal election showed there were very different factors that were in play in Western Australia. The decision was made at the time because of legal reasons. The feedback that both Ben Morton and I had given at the time, we did not support the challenge. We did not support siding with Clive Palmer, but the decision was made that we would. In the end, after consulting with Premier McGowan, the Prime Minister understood that we needed to back Western Australia and we withdrew from the challenge. In fact, when I was Attorney General, uh, there was another challenge by Clive Palmer to our great state, you'd all recall. Uh, he was suing our great state for a significant amount of money. In that regard, we intervened in support of the Western Australian Government. But certainly, 
that initial decision to back Clive Palmer, even though we reversed it, um, meant that the Labor Party was able to run an effective campaign against us, a very strong campaign highlighting this decision, even though we reversed it. And yes, it certainly did have an impact on the vote last night. What happened in Curtin? Also had what a happened crack in Curtin? Curtin? That was extraordinary what we saw happen in Curtin overnight. Did that take you by surprise? Uh, well, again, Curtin was always going to be very, very tight um, when a teal put their hand up. And as we saw across Australia, this was a coordinated group of people who came together. They've called themselves independents. Um, they're not necessarily independents. They're a coordinated group of people who have come together um, and have campaigned incredibly effectively across Australia. They have been very, very well funded. Um, and certainly, given that they were only running running in Liberal seats um, against sitting Liberal members, what we have seen is the Liberal Party vote uh, has transferred in many cases to those independents. Curtin is still a very, very tight race um, and obviously the postals are still being counted. Um, but again, you had a Teal independent running against a Liberal. Uh, the Liberal Party vote has clearly uh, been reduced. And on that basis, um, Curtin at the moment is incredibly tight. That's, incre that's like a very severe rejection of Liberal Party values and what was considered a, originally a blue ribbon seat. It's happened across the country. How can the Liberal Party rebuild in, in seats like that? It's a very good question. And obviously, after any election, um, bearing in mind that there are still postal votes being counted and there are still some seats to be decided. Uh, but the overall result across Australia um, is clear. This is something that we really do need to have a look at at a party. And I likened it last night um, on the panel that I was on to a structural change that really is happening in politics. And that structural change you really did see last night, those inner city seats. Here it's in Curtin. You see them in New South Wales. Uh, you've seen it in Brisbane. You've seen it in Victoria. Um, they are very much, they're not going Labor. They are going Teal. And then you have sort of those more outer seats that are traditionally Labor Party held, but they are now aspirational voters. Whilst they may not have become Liberal seats last night, um, in so many of them, the vote is changing. So I think what you are now seeing is a true structural change in the way politics works in Australia. Does structural you... change mean that the Liberals give up on inner city seats going forward? Just... Absolutely not. We have to sit down and we have to have a good look and really analyse the vote. But I think what really does show, you know, we need to ensure that we are supporting those aspirational voters. Uh, we need to ensure that we're out there. And if you look at the vote in the regions last night and you look at somewhere like Townsville, uh, Phil Thompson had a swing to him in Townsville. He is an outstanding local member. Um, we need to ensure that we are backing those aspirational voters. We are backing the regions. Um, but when you get a result like this across Australia, bearing in mind the result when you look at the primary vote is also not good for Labor. Um, it's an interesting election result. It's about 51-49 when you actually look at it. And the Labor Party also saw a reduction in their primary vote. So I think both major parties um, are going to really have a look at and interrogate that vote across Australia in detail. Yeah, but the primary vote, the primary vote for the Liberal Party in, in Western Australia is much lower than the Labor Party's vote in Western Australia. Uh, we referred to the, um, uh, the border challenge before. Yep. Uh, the Prime Minister referred to WA residents as cave dwellers at some point. I mean, doesn't that show that he had a fundamental misunderstanding of, of WA's cautious approach and uh, in keeping the mining industry going, which is good for the whole country? I mean, this is obviously a repudiation of, of the way that he treated WA during the pandemic. Scott Morrison was actually a great friend to Western Australia, and that was evident in relation to getting us our fair share of GST. On any analysis, that was one of the greatest things our government did. I went into the Senate way back in 2008. And I knew then that we needed to get Western Australia its fair share of GST. Scott knew he did not have to convince Western Australians. He needed to bring the rest of the country with him. And he did just that. In relation to the way we managed COVID, we were able to do it differently in Western Australia. We were able to close a border and keep everybody else out. And in doing that, we lived a life that really across Australia, no one else lived. But the impression is that the Prime Minister didn't support that. Cave dwellers. That was not what he was saying at the time. What he was saying was there was a light at the end of the tunnel. But putting all of that aside, last night, 
the vote was clear. Western Australians very much supported the approach of Mark McGowan. That is what they did yesterday. In fact, I had a number of people on polling booths uh, who would come up to me and say, um, I'm voting for Mark McGowan. Um, I mean, when you've got people approaching you on polling booths and genuinely saying they weren't trying to be smart, I'd like to vote for Mark McGowan. I think that just shows you that in Western Australia, um, there is still that overwhelming support uh, for Mr McGowan as Premier. Um, there was the overwhelming support for the way our state got through COVID-19, um, and that was certainly on display in the vote last night. You mentioned that there was a, that the Liberals were going through a rebuilding phase, yep. which, you know, this is the first I've heard the Federal Party um, acknowledge the state result, uh, you know, as a factor in, in this election. Um, what actually occurred in the rebuilding phase? Like, what steps were taken as a result of the state election last year? Yep, so when you actually reduce to two people in the uh, Legislative Assembly, you obviously lose a lot of the resources and the people on the ground that you would other otherwise have as a state team. Um, we also obviously had a primary vote that was actually decimated uh, last year. As a party, we had come together and we had determined that we would make certain changes going forward. We have been working through those changes to ensure that the people of Western Australia know that we have learned from the mistakes that we made. What changes specifically, though? Uh, and in particular, it will be, as we'd always said, brought to our state conference later on this year in relation to the way that we undertake pre-selections and looking at implementing plebiscites. And we've been working through that process. At the same time, though, we knew that we needed to run a federal election campaign on the ground. I am really pleased with the way the Western Australian Liberal team came together. Um, we ran a really good campaign on the ground. All of our members came together um, and I can honestly say, they will say to you, they left no stone unturned. But when you are looking at the factors that were in play last night, the very strong anti-Clive Palmer campaign that impacted our vote, the strong support uh, for the Western Australian Premier, Mark McGowan, um, that has led to the result that we now have in Western Australia. Who is the best person to um, lead the Liberal Party back back from this? Is it Peter Dutton, Karen Andrews? Canberra's asking, if you weren't in the Senate, would you put your hand up for the job? <laughs> Literally, today is a day for me to focus on um, my colleagues who no longer have seats in the parliament, for me to focus on the Western Australian team. Uh, but also, you know, postals are still being counted. Um, I saw last night, and you all will have seen, um, that... The seat of Moore appeared to be in play. Uh, with all the postals that have come in today and the trend it's going about 60, 40 our way, it now does appear that we will retain the seat of Moore. So in relation to a number of seats across Australia, there still are the postal votes to be counted. Uh, so at this point in time, my role today is to focus on the team, to focus in particular on those members of the team who no longer have seats. But surely, but surely the Liberal Party can't lurch further to the right under Peter Duck right now, given what just happened to you overnight. Uh, well, again, this is something that we need to look at as a party. But you also, as a party, need to remain true to yourself. You need to remain true to your principles. Um, I think we ran a good campaign. I think we have been a good government. I mean, the one thing that we had always said when we were elected in 2013 was that we would be a government that was all about jobs, jobs and more jobs. In fact, if you recall in 2013, we said we'd create a million jobs in five years, and we did. Um, when I look at the job market today, when I look at the unemployment rate, when I look at our investment, in particular uh, in skills and training, we've done well. And we hand over an Australia that is in a better position today than it was when we came to government. I am very proud to be part of uh, what is now the outgoing uh, government, but I'm very proud of the Australia that we are handing over to Labor and Mr Albanese. And the test now for Mr Albanese is he has made a number of promises to the people of Australia throughout the election campaign. Mr Albanese now has to deliver on those promises, and I hope that he does. You know, he has said he will bring inflation down. Well, I look forward to watching him do that. He has said that he will ensure that there is an increase, in particular in wages. I look forward to him delivering that. Um, he has said that he will bring electricity prices down. 
I look forward to watching him deliver that. And our role now, as what is the incoming opposition, is to hold the Labor government to account. Because again, to quote Scott Morrison from last night, we believe in Australia and Australians. This is all about the best thing you can do for the Australian people. Obviously, you bring up um, pre-selections. You, you brought up pre-selections in Western Australia. Are you concerned about the influence of the Klan or the Christian right on pre-selections in WA? Well, I think we've made our position very, very clear as a Liberal Party. Uh, we had a review into the outcome of the state election. Uh, we accepted the recommendations of that review and we are working towards now implementing them. Obviously, though, we also had a federal election uh, and we needed to focus our game on the ground here.